Hi there Kia owners, today in your 2018 Kia Optima, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kurt's Class 1 1 quarter inch trailer hitch receiver. And this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. You will be able to see the receiver here at the back, but the cross tube is fairly tucked underneath pretty far. It is visible down below, but since this car sits so low to the ground, unless you're down on your hands and knees, you really won't notice that cross tube. It does have a one and a quarter by one and a quarter inch receiver here at the back. It's a class one receiver, so it's gonna be great for light duty applications and accessories. Uh, two bike platform rack work out great on this. And you, there are also some other accessories. You could use a cargo carrier to get a little bit of gear out of here as well. Maybe free up room for an additional passenger or so. You'll secure your accessories to your hitch using a half inch hitch pin and clip. Now one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at eTrailer and you can get locking ones so you can protect your investment. On bottom, we've got plate style safety chain loops that has a moderate size opening. It works fine with our small chain and our bigger guy here can clip on and off of there as well. This hitch features a 200 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of the receiver. And that should be enough for a two bike platform rack fully loaded up with a couple of bikes. You could use a four bike rack um, in some instances, but you do just need to pay attention to that weight and how heavy your bikes are because it's potential that you could overload it at that weight. So just uh, do your math and be careful with that. It also offers a 2000 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much that you can pull behind you. And that's enough if you've got a small utility trailer, maybe you need to take a little bit of trash off to the dump, or maybe you've just got a small jet ski, something really small and light, maybe even a small boat. As long as the weight stayed down, you should be able to pull that with this as well. And now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, it measures about four inches. This is important when determining if your accessories will contact the bumper when inserted, and if they can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. And from the ground to the top inside of the receiver tube, it measures right at about 11 inches. This is important when determining if you need to drop a rise or a raised shank on your accessories. And since this one is so low, I would recommend a raised shank on your accessories. We'll begin our installation underneath the vehicle. We can remove the under shield on the driver's side. There's four push pins that we'll need to remove. You can use a screwdriver or a trim panel tool. We see here there's a small notch, kind of in a plus shape around the fastener. You can choose any of those notches to put your screwdriver in. And when you push it in there, it'll pop the head out and then you can just pull the pin out. We'll just repeat that for the remaining ones to get all those removed. We'll now have two nuts we'll need to remove. You'll have one here at the back, and then you'll have kind of a notched out area here where it's coming out at an angle. We're gonna remove that as well, and we'll use our 10 millimeter socket to remove these. Once we've got both of those removed, we can pull our panel down and set it aside. So we've exposed the frame rail on the driver's side, now we're going to do the passenger side. The exhaust is in our way, so we're going to take a strap and we're just going to put it in place here, hanging it on our lower suspension. And then we'll just cinch up our strap here, and that way it'll catch our exhaust as we're lowering it down so we can use our strap to control lowering it down nice and gently. We're going to have a hanger here at the back, and we'll also have one towards the front at the middle here as well. We'll take some silicone spray. I'm gonna put it on the hanger where it attaches up there. That'll just make it easier to get off. And then we can just use a pry bar up in here and just pry the hanger off. So now we're sitting on our strap. We can use our strap to gently lower it down. So we're just taking out a little bit of tension until it drops down there. So now we'll take down our heat shield here above our exhaust. We're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to remove three nuts. You'll have one on the trunk pan here where kind of your spare tire is. And then we're gonna have two over on the side there. Okay, now our heat shield, it does have a couple of rubber attachments here. There we go. Those, are just, those will just stay on there, so just pull those down. And then we can just set this aside. Now on the bottom of the frame rail, we've exposed it on each side. On both sides, you're gonna have this rubber pad here towards the front, covering up one of your excess holes and one of our fastener holes here at the back. So we're gonna, just gonna pop this cap out on each side and we're gonna get this kind of foam pad off on each side as well. 
Next, we're gonna need to fish wire our hardware into position, but if we look, our spacer blocks here, they're not gonna fit up into the frame, and neither will our carriage bolts. This is our access hole to get the hardware fed into the frame. So it's a little bit too small, so we'll need to enlarge it some. You can use a file, you can use a cutoff wheel. There's a lot of different ways you could enlarge the hole, whatever you've got available to you. We're just gonna use a round file and we're gonna notch out the front and the back side a little bit to allow that hardware to slide in. So now that we've got our hole ground out there, we can feed our hardware into place. Just test it first, make sure that it does slide up in there. So you can see that we can get our hardware in there. Now we'll take our fish wire. We're gonna start with the bolt furthest from our access hole here. So we're gonna go up inside the hole here at the rear, and then we're gonna feed that fish wire towards the front and bring the coiled end right out of the hole that we had just enlarged. We can now take a spacer, go ahead and push that up into the frame. After you get your spacer up in there, we can then take one of the carriage bolts that come in our kit, thread it right onto the coiled end there, and then we'll push this up into the frame. And with these, I find it's all usually easiest to kind of roll it into position. And then we'll just get that rotated and push it up in there. Pull our fish wire until our bolt drops down through just like that. And now for our other piece of hardware on this side, we're gonna do the reverse fish wire technique. To do this, we'll take our spacer, slide it over our coiled end, then take our carriage bolt. We'll slide that into the coiled end there, just thread it in. We can then push our bolt up into the frame. Then our spacer. And then we can just pull our carriage bolt back down through the hole. So once we've got both our hardware prepared like this, we can perform the exact same procedures over on the other side to get that one installed. And now with the next set of hands, we're gonna feed our hitch into position. Make sure you raise it up over your exhaust and then drop your fish wires down through the corresponding holes in your hitch. It's gonna be the front and the back hole. Don't worry about that middle hole there. And then it's also got a notch in it there to go around our exhaust hanger. We can then lift it up into position. We can then remove our fish wire. Take one of the flange nuts and start it onto the bolt. Once we get one started on each side, the hitch will hold itself up, making it easier to install the rest of your hardware. Now, if you're having a little bit of difficulty getting this to feed around your hanger, what you can do is just take a 12 millimeter socket and we're just loosening these a little bit, just like that. And that'll give you a little bit of play in there. See how you can move that around. And that should be just enough to be able to get that hitch all the way up and fully tightened down. Then we can just go back and snug these up once we've got the hitch up. We can now go back and tighten our hardware with a 19 millimeter socket. And then we can go back and torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. Now we can put our heat shield back into place. It's just gonna slide up over your exhaust. You can line up the holes and then reinstall your nuts. And then we can just tighten those down with our 10 millimeter socket. And now we can put our exhaust back into position. We're gonna put a little bit of spray lube on the hanger. And then we can just lift up on our exhaust and our hanger should just push right back into place. We'll just repeat that with the other hanger and we can remove our strap as well. And that completes our installation of Kurt's class one, one and a quarter inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2018 Kia Optima.